So I decided to finally get around to talking about what I enjoy and what I dislike about Rogue Company. It's a game I was pretty skeptical about because other than Battlefront and GTA, I've never been much of a fan of third person shooters. I started playing the game last month not expecting much for that reason and I think it's a decent game now to pass the time. I'm still 50-50 on it though. With that being said, I'm going to try and list six or seven pros and cons about this game for the purpose of this video and for anybody that has not yet played this game by the way. I think that would be beneficial to have people know what they are getting into first and I really wish somebody would have done a video like this for me to watch before I started playing the game. So that's why I decided to structure this video this way. But we're going to jump into it. So I'm going to list the things I like about it first, like I usually do in a pro and con type of video. The first thing is that it can be fun to play if you have other people to play with. It's definitely more enjoyable with people that know what they are doing, but you pretty much have to have at least one person with you to enjoy it. Also, to me, one of the main reasons why I got into it is because it has that Counter-Strike type of feel to it when you play Demolition. That was my first impression, at least. Another thing I would consider a pro would be having so many different types of characters and abilities. That completely changes the situation in every single match. Certain characters are more effective against other certain characters. I kind of like that aspect of the game. Also, 4-on-4 four four for the four main multiplayer game modes isn't too overwhelming. I thought it would have been at first when you throw in abilities into the mix, but really the only time it's too much is when all four players on the other team are close and run together. But if they are spread out, it seems like you always have a chance to win those 1-on-1 one -on -one or 1v2 one engagements. And another thing I really like is some of the 3-on-3 three -three or limited time game modes that seem like they are changed every week to 10 days. There isn't many game modes on this game, which I think helps the player base out for matchmaking as well. But it is nice to try a brand new game mode every once in a while. And the sixth pro that I have listed here is the base version of the game is of course free to play. So that's one last game that you have to pay for, which is always great. And my last pro is that I love the submachine guns on here. Almost all of them are extremely fun to use. So I'm going to start listing some of the cons now. I'm not going to go into everything or go into full detail with all of these. I'm going to save some of that for future videos. But for now, here's some of the things that I've noticed. So the first con or thing I dislike about this game that I sort of already mentioned is the fact that this is a third person shooter game which means that there is a shit ton of third person corner peekers slash corner campers on the game that makes it somewhat difficult to rush, move up, or to take a site. In fact, it's almost impossible to do so in some lobbies, especially in ranked. I have lost gunfights where I have shot a guy down to about 5 to 10 HP, and guess what, the guy hides behind a corner, peeks when he's ready. I'm at 100 HP, and guess what? He wins the gunfight when he's at 5 HP. Only because he's 3 peeking a corner. Either that or let's say the bomb is planted. People will seriously use third person view to watch and run from somebody in a gunfight. I personally can't stand it when somebody is running and hiding from me during a gunfight. And he uses third person view to keep running from me until his HP either goes up or until the bomb goes off. That's just not fun to me. Also, melee weapons that are thrown are way too overpowered. I don't like the fact that one player can have a fully decked out loadout with a primary weapon and another player on the other team might have a pistol, a couple perks, and oh yeah, spend only 4,000 on a melee weapon, tosses it at somebody, and they win 90% of the time when it lands. And that's without upgrades on it. Also, because of third-person view, guess what? There's a lot of people that three-peak with nothing but a melee weapon out, which is just stupid if you ask me. And when it comes to the scoring system, I don't think it's entirely working out. A character like Kestrel, for example, I call her Pretzel, just for the hell of it, only ends up at the top of the leaderboard, or the scoreboard, because of her passive ability getting her an extra thousand dollars per down that she gets. 
and unfortunately the money is the main category on the scoreboard. I'm not going to talk any more about that because it's definitely something I will address again in a future video, but also I think reviving people should get more points and get more than $500. Reviving a teammate and getting them back into the fight, that's huge. That's the difference between winning a round and losing a round. Saving a teammate is far, far more valuable than killing an enemy on the other team on a game like this. I just wish the scoring system would reward revives a bit more when it comes to that. Another con I have to list here is the glitches and small things that need to be patched that are seemingly being ignored. Now, compared to other games that have come out over the years, this game does not have many issues when it comes to this. But I have to say, I hate the fact that they still have not fixed the daily contracts when it comes to unlocking reputation score every day. There's only two ways to unlock reputation score or reputation points, and that's by daily contracts or by leveling up. Two of the daily contracts get first blood three times and deal a thousand melee damage to enemies. I have noticed it rarely ever works or registers on the contract. I could get 10 first blood kills in five different matches to start off the day, and guess what? I'm lucky if one or two register on the contract to get my points or whatever. I wish that in particular would get fixed, but it's been like that for a while now. Moving forward to the fifth con, it's simple. The game is pay to win just like most games are in this generation. Sure, the base version is free, but for instance, here's a couple of screenshots I wanted to show you. I have nearly seven days played on the game already, and I still have only 12 of the 18 rogues unlocked. And I haven't bought anything at the store yet either. It's going to take me at least 10 to 12 days of real playing time just to unlock all the characters. Meanwhile, other people that buy into a better version of the game or get rogue bucks to buy those characters on day one, they get them. I'm not going to say any more about that. We know that's unfair. And finally, to the sixth and seventh cons that I will wrap up this video with. Are the cheaters because of the crossplay with PC who specifically use Phantom and Fixer and cheat with them, and also the amount of AFK people or people that leave mid game? I've never seen a game have so many people go AFK in my life. This shit completely ruins the game, in my opinion, and it's by far the biggest problem and will continue to be so in the future if something drastic is not done. With all that being said, those are my general pros and cons of Rogue Company. That's what I like and dislike about the game. Feel free to leave a rating and a comment on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.